Imagine 3 is Google DeepMind's newest image generation model. It improves on version 2 with a very high level of detail and photorealism, even when hands are involved, which has been and continues to be a bit of a challenge with these models. According to the technical report, it's a latent diffusion model capable of generating images of 1K resolution, which can be upsampled up to 8X. They also published evaluation results for overall preference on GenAI Bench, and Imagine 3 is the most preferred model among Midjourney 6, Dolly 3, and Stable Diffusion 3. They also show similar results for other two benchmarks, DrawBench and Dolly 3 Eval. In terms of prompt image alignment, Imagine 3 also beats the competition. On visual appeal, it is only slightly behind Midjourney V6. And in terms of visual Q&A, it also is the best performing models among the models analyzed. Imagine 3 leads on all categories here, which include complexity, composition, action, color, etc. So how can you try Imagine 3? The easiest way is probably with Google Gemini. Although you may realize that if you use Gemini to try and generate images, you may get a response that looks like this, saying that it is not able to do so. That really means that it is not available in your country yet. Google says they are gradually releasing image generation in additional languages and countries. And unfortunately, there doesn't seem to be a list with all the countries you can refer to. You really just need to try and see if it's available for you. So for example, I am in an EU country and I can access Gemini image generation with Imagine 3 in the mobile app if I use a VPN to connect to a server in the US, for example. Do note that you may have access to Imagine 2 in your country, but not Imagine 3. So anyway, another good way to try Imagine 3 is through image effects, which again is not available in all countries yet. Here I am using a VPN to access it. ImageFX has some really nice suggestions here and sort of random prompt examples you can play with, which is a good way to try Imagine 3 if you're not very creative and just want to see some results right away. So this one here is a very surreal prompt with some really appealing images. And in ImageFX, you can also edit a generated image by selecting the area of the image you want to edit with this brush here and then you describe the change that you want to see. It's basically another prompt. So here, let's say I want to see a blue hair instead of this one, and that worked quite well. So let's try another example. This time, let's pick this example of a micro photography of a colorful gnome riding a snail. So the prompt suggestions here is actually a good way to study or learn about good prompting practices. Once again, the results here are very appealing and highly detailed with a blurred background that really gives the impression of death and bouquet, I guess it's called. So there are a couple of settings here versus the model selection, which only best quality is available to me here. That would be Imagine 3. There is also a seed button, which you can set if you want the same prompts to generate the same images every time. So that's about it for settings. Now, one thing that has been a challenge for these models also is the ability to generate text within images. So to see how Imagine 3 performs, let's try a couple of prompts where text is involved. So my first prompt here is going to be a photorealistic image of a Japanese samurai drinking a margarita while carrying a sword in a Tokyo metro station with a sign on top that says Tokyo. So the results here are actually pretty good and you can see some text on the top. So not bad at all. Let's try another one. This time at the SLR photo of a homeless alien in a busy street holding a sign that says my planet has no food. Okay, so this one was also very good with the text perfectly written here and laid out on the cardboard. The image quality is also very good. So that was a pretty good example. Let's try one more, this time a macro photography of a bumblebee seen through a lens wearing a t-shirt that says, got honey. So first one was messed up here, but the other ones are pretty good. At least the text is very accurate and high fidelity. 
And then, of course, there is the elusive problem of the hand. So let's see how it does with hands involved in the image. So I'll ask for a studio photo of a hand drawing with a pencil with a close-up look on it. And the results are actually very good and realistic. These really do look like real hands with fine details and perfect fingers. All right, another way to try Imagine Free is in Vertex AI. If you are a Google Cloud customer, you can head over to Vertex AI Studio in the Vision tab. Here you can select the model Imagine Free and also the aspect ratio. So for example, you can change it to landscape format. You can choose the number of results to generate up to four and a negative prompt to include things to not include in an image, which gives you another way to control the generations. So here you can type your prompts just like you would anywhere else. And you get your generated images right here in the console. And notice that there's a digital watermark. Notice here, digital watermark is powered by DeepMind Synth ID technology, which embeds a watermark in the content in a way that is imperceptible to humans and in a way that doesn't affect the quality of the generated content. It works for not only images, but also audio, text, and video. So this is more of a responsible AI feature. If you want to work with an API, there's also a Colab notebook you can find a link for in the video description with some code samples to working with Imagine, some utility functions here. You can work to generate multiple images with different aspect ratios, and also a series of sample prompts here to generate different kinds of images. Now to end this video with a little bit of fun, I created some music with music effects and put some images together to give you this clip.